Hello again from Skip, Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle. Uh, here's the next part of the uh, 10 gigahertz experiment. It's uh, kind of in between the two main parts, so we're going to call this one part 5.5. Time is marching on here, and the uh, snow isn't too far off in the distance. I still plan on getting this thing outside to do some noise tests before winter gets, so this is the uh, part where I build the feed for the system. So for the earlier experiments with the uh, 21 foot dish and then the six foot, both prime feed dishes, this is what I was using for a feed and uh, it's the uh, standard scalar ring type. And uh, this is not, this isn't gonna work for the offset feed. It takes a, a different type of uh, feed to illuminate it properly. I didn't want to take the uh, other feed apart the scalar ring type one and I didn't want to use the waveguide. I kind of wanted to keep this one together in case I use it for something else. So I had to build uh, everything from scratch again, uh, right from the ground up. So it meant uh, going back to the scrap bin. The part that I needed to start with to build the uh, waveguide itself was a piece of tubing that's 22 millimeters in diameter. Uh, lots of copper pipe like that, but I didn't have any in, but uh, I do have some scrap pieces from some old UHF 432 duplexers and the inner tuning adjustment pipe is perfect. It's exactly the right size. I just cut the pipe to a random length just to get the uh, slots off the end and a big gnarly nut off the other end to uh, give me a straight piece of pipe. And then the next trick was to uh, squeeze the end so it'd go from round to a rectangular shape to fit the uh, WR90 waveguide fitting. To accomplish this, I took a piece of steel and kind of ground it down to the shape of the hole of the waveguide and then worked the uh, pipe uh, with pliers and a vise and made it uh, fit over the end and then I just lightly tapped it to make the end of it uh, rectangular shape. Next I needed a WR90 flange so I uh, ripped the end off this one and I kind of tried heating it but that didn't work so it's just a matter of cutting it off. It had to be made of metal that I could solder to. I had lots of aluminum ones laying around but uh, solder don't stick to aluminum very well. The next trick was trying to figure out how to hold this together so I could solder it. I uh, didn't have bolts long enough, so I soldered two uh, 632 bolts together to make them get some length out of it, and then uh, pinched it between the pipe in between the metal uh, flange I was going to solder to and an aluminum plate on the other end, and uh, it was all clamped together so I could solder it, and uh, it worked well. Clamping it this way and then soldering it also helped keep the uh, tube square with the uh, WR90 flange on the end. Next is the uh, launcher section. I'm using the IMU design. This is the part that will, uh, we'll say, project the signal out to properly illuminate the uh, offset dish design. Using Paul, W1GHZ is a nice little feed design program. You enter in particular parameters of the dish itself and it uh, comes up with the uh, Nice IMU launcher design specifications. Building the uh, flare angle section is the uh, real tricky part, and this is where uh, Paul's program really shines. The program calculates that you cut out uh, like a donut, a piece of uh, brass or copper, with the inner diameter at 22.6 millimeters and the outer diameter at 45.3 millimeters. With a protractor or a compass, you mark off 176 degrees and cut the donut in half uh, with that, with this angle. This is the piece you're going to use to uh, create the flare angle with. I usually quite often uh, make it out of paper to test it first to make sure I didn't screw up on the calculations, but uh, then I cut it out of the brass material. I usually make it just a little bit bigger just so I can uh, make it uh, make it fit. You can always cut it off, but it's pretty hard to add it back on. Anyway, you uh, warp this back and forth until the uh, two ends meet up and that's your flare angle done. Next I cut out the uh, pipe that's going to make up the launcher part. This is another part of that 432 uh, filter can. Uh, the pipe's just a little bit bigger in diameter but we'll fix that. Using the uh, pipe cutter, it does square it up pretty good on the ends but I, uh, I stick it on the lathe just to make it uh, good and proper. Since the uh, pipe is just a little bit too big for the diameter I need, 
I put it on a bandsaw and I uh, I slid it. I took about an eighth of an inch out of it, and uh, then I stick in the vise. I uh, clamped it with a uh, with an ordinary hose clamp and then soldered it together. Next, I built this jig to uh, insert all the pieces onto so that it could be uh, held together while I uh, warmed it up with a torch and soldered together with a soldering iron. The two aluminum rings are inserted inside the uh, launcher pipe, and then the aluminum pipe itself is the uh, same diameter as the as the uh, feed waveguide and. Everything gets everything gets held centered and uh, good to go for uh, soldering it together one piece. So some liquid flux. I uh, proceeded in soldering this thing. I I heated up a little bit with a propane torch and then I use a ordinary wide tipped uh, Weller iron to uh, solder the pieces together. Using the torch is just uh, all by itself. It's just too much heat. Everything everything just melts off. Uh, you can't do it all at once, sort of thing. So it's a bit tricky, but it gets done. So with it all gobbed together with solder, it's rather ugly looking, so next is the uh, cleanup part. I have one, a nice little belt sander here that's uh, really good for doing small jobs like this. Once I've got all the main uh, gobs of solder ground on on the belt sander and I uh, take my die grinder with uh, different flapper wheels and uh, finish the job nice and smooth. So after a little bit more uh, polishing and grinding uh, excess solder off, it uh, turned out pretty nice. The uh, launcher tube fits, the uh, launcher section I should say, fits right on top of the uh, waveguide tube. And um, that's all there is to that part of it. So with all the construction work done, I guess it's time to uh, see if this thing's going to work. We'll have to sweep it and tune it and, and uh, see what the end result is like. So there's one extra part for this assembly, which is the uh, transition from the waveguide or WR90 to the SMA connector. Unfortunately, I had to use a SMA to an end type adapter, but uh, hey, you use what you got. So with my fingers crossed, I turned the power on to the old HP sweep generator and scalar network analyzer, and uh, it uh, came to life. Uh, this, this old gear, you never know what's, what it's going to do when you, when you turn it on. It has been on in a long time. So it was just the RF bridge connected. I uh, turned on the RF on the on the output module and uh, started setting things up. I wanted to zero it out so that I have a reference line of uh, zero dB for the return loss. It's been a while since I've used this thing and I had to actually sit there and uh, think about it for a minute. Uh, what to push and what to adjust. It's it's uh, been a while. You don't use this stuff that often. You soon do, You soon forget. So with the unit uh, zeroed out for an open circuit, I uh, put a termination on there, 50 ohm load, just to check and make sure things are working right. I knew this was a good termination and the return loss is around the negative three, 31 dB, so it looks good. So I was kind of curious, I just installed the uh, waveguide to SMA transition piece on there and I was curious to see what it looked like being uh, swept. Well, it was nothing special, but uh, nothing outrageous either and it's kind of wide which is what I kind of expected at uh, negative 12 dB. I have this uh, waveguide termination and I was kind of curious to see what it would look like on the uh, sweep. I've never actually tested this thing so I installed it on the transition piece and uh, checked it. What I got was kind of a shock. I looked at this, looked at it again and only got a return loss of uh, what 0.11 dB? Uh, <laughs> I think can't be that bad can it? So knowing something was wrong, I went back and looked at the uh, waveguide to the transition piece and uh, heh, big dummy, uh, it helps to get it connected right. You, you can't uh, have the uh, waveguide openings at uh, 90 degrees to each other. It just, it just don't work. So I unbolted it and uh, 
swung it 90 degrees and hooked it up correctly so that the wave gut holes are uh, lined up properly. Boy, what a dummy. Anyways, it looks much better. I don't know what to really expect. I've never done this before, so I'm seeing about negative 20 dB, and for a typical load, I guess that's okay. Okay, so next so as the uh, get back on track here, I'm going to sweep the uh, waveguide part of the feed itself, making sure that I had the uh, waveguide holes lined up. So I got it connected to the bridge and held in a clamp and uh, went over and looked at the sweep to see what the results were. Again, not knowing what to expect, I was uh, glad to see it came down a little bit. Anyways, it's now negative 15 dB return loss, but you can see there's a big uh, resonance spot over to the right, so there's uh, some more adjusting. So knowing what's probably going to happen, because I've built this kind of feed for uh, 9 centimeters and 6 centimeters, the thing to do next was uh, stick the uh, launcher on it and uh, see what, it do what it's doing. Well, encouraging. I see the return loss has gotten a little better now. It's a negative 18. And I see the resonant point has moved over just a little bit, so I, I know what to do next. So I grabbed the uh, launcher section and... Uh, start rotating it and sliding it outwards and uh, you'll see how it uh, slowly tunes that nice uh, deep return notch over to the right finally onto the spot where I want it on frequency. Well, that's looking much better seeing it in an area of uh, negative 32 to negative uh, 33 dB for the return loss is nice and deep. The only bad thing is though my uh, <laughs> The section of the IMU launcher that uh, clamps onto the waveguide is almost falling off the end of the waveguide itself. I uh, had a sneaky feeling it was going to be too short, and that's all I had at the time when I was building it. So I went into town later and picked up a uh, proper copper pipe coupler. It's the exact uh, size I need, and uh, slotted it, and then took the old section off and carefully soldered the new one back on without uh, unsoldering the whole thing. So I took the new and improved uh, IMU launcher on the waveguide and stuck it back onto the test equipment to retune it and get her clamped in. Once again I was adjusting the uh, IMU launcher on the end of the waveguide uh, back and forth and was going farther out with it like last time. And that's about where it is, around negative uh, 31 dB for the return loss. Uh, just for the fun of it, I thought next I would uh, decrease the sweep bandwidth of the sweep generator and have a closer look at the uh, the resonant dip itself and tweak it maybe a little bit. Also, uh, move the cursor back and forth here and just see where the uh, bandwidth of the dip itself is, just for not uh, just for giggles. So I moved the IMU launcher back and forth a little bit and I can't get much more out of it. I maybe increased the uh, bottom of the dip a little wider, but that's about all. It's about all we're going to get out of it, which is actually pretty darn good. So with it all adjusted, I uh, took the little hose clamp and slid her down on top the slotted section of the uh, new copper pipe piece and uh, clamped her in tight and we're going to call her good at that point. So I guess I've got no more excuses. I have to get the dish pulled out and assembled outside and then uh, get it all hooked up and do some noise tests. That'll be next, so uh, stay tuned. This turned out to be a nice short little video, so I hope you enjoyed watching. Thanks again from Skip, Vector Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle.